industrial commodities is because whatever that use is, is cheaper Cheap. than something they're substituting for. And, it, and it's cheaper because they're, the fish are so plentiful, they're so tightly schooled, and they can do it in an industrial manner. I think it's, it's that simple. So no doubt, if the actual price per pound, per pound on the, like the, the, dried, the dried fish meal is probably going to be less than the price per pound that you pay for a chicken doo-doo as, as fertilizer, which, it, which is not gathered in the same, with the same kind of industrial process. So it's only because it's only because it's cheap, and, it, and that's it. And that's that's what makes it so criminal. Okay. Question for Paul: Who, you know, obviously you're the skinny fish master yourself, and like since in your video that I participated in session, I want to jump. Yeah, I, I prefer, prefer to be called the skinny magician. <laughs> 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 but anyway, so the fishing sheets. When I watch you in a video trying to, you know, try to get your hooks out of the fish. Well, any precautions or things you need to think about when you've got a large bass or a really big to the blue fish when you're floating out there? Well, yeah, a large bass are a piece of cake. They come up to you after they're all done, they open their mouth and say, oh, get this thing out of my face. <laughs> but bluefish, yeah, then you're worrying about your fingers. Right. You're really worried about your fingers. Any special techniques that make it easier? Or is it just uh, warfare? Uh, no, it's warfare. Yeah, just, <laughs> what I do is I wear the aqua skins gloves. Right. Those things are in, they're indestructible. You know, they've, they've got Kevlar all over them. And it, believe me, I've had bluefish take a hold of those gloves. And, well, it's pressure, but you don't feel the teeth. So, yeah, it's about wearing the gloves. And, and once again, I, that, I, I use the aqua skin spot. Bluefish is one of the few fish that can actually see with, with some precision out of water. That's what makes yeah. them. Especially dangerous. Yeah. You can see them looking you right in the face. <laughs> <laughs> if you look, if you look on my webs, uh, uh, that one skishing the Montauk Blitz, it's on YouTube. You'll see the darn thing looking right, looking me in the eye. Shark teeth too. I know. Eyeball right now. Yes, Anybody? Yes, sir. So, John, uh, what kind of bucktail setup would you uh, use in and around bass holding water? Like, let's say. 20 feet. And I saw some move real fast. Okay, so the question is, what kind of bucktail would I use at 20 feet of moving water? So I, that's a lot like, that's in like fishing. Um, and I'm using a lot of times three ounces, a three ounce bucktail, four ounce. In, in the inlets, I'm using, definitely I'm using five ounce, and I've even used six. I don't like to have to use six, but I've had days where, or nights where, that's what I needed to get down to the fish. So the answer is heavy bucktails, um, especially with the moving water. You can, 20 feet, it's kind of deep, you can get some of those newer uh, tsunami shads down there too, but not when the water's really screaming. Bucktails are pretty hard to beat to get down in that strike zone and, and stay there effectively. <coughs> Save the Menhaden, and that all the proceeds from this event are going to go to Save the Menhaden. That's a website. It's a website. Very good. Charlie Hutchinson from uh, Maryland's Saltwater of Anglers has a series of columns in uh, Save the Menhaden called Menhaden Model 6, 7, 8, 12, and so on. He's, ter he's terrific. 